Okay, so our next topic is composites, and composite materials are materials comprised of two or more materials that are basically glued together somehow. Um, and that gives them, uh, it's the materials usually have different properties, and so that gives them some interesting properties. Here's an example of um, some composite materials in here. Um, so go ahead and watch this, this movie. It also shows some of the molding process that goes on with composite materials. This is one of the probably most important composite materials that we have, and that is um, concrete. So concrete is one of those composite materials that is vital to our modern world. Um, it allows us to make some amazing things, you know, bridges and uh, roads and you name it. Um, it's, it's a fantastic material. Okay, so basically comp composite materials are made out of a couple things. They're made out of either fibers or sheets or particles that are reinforced with some sort of binding agent or matrix or glue. Um, the fibers and sheets, they are either, they can be textile, so for instance, if we're looking at Kevlar, which we'll talk about in a few minutes, um, it's a type of, of plastic Kev, um, textile. Uh, it can be made out of glass, like fiberglass, it can be made out of wood, it can be made out of carbon fibers, so any of those can, can be the reinforcement part. The matrix uh, is usually made out of of uh, thermoplastics or thermosetting plastics, ceramics, or metals, okay? Or it can be other kinds of glues. The thermos, like um, for instance, uh, resin is a very, um, is, is one of those. And resin, I don't know if it's a thermosetting plastic, but it's, it's basically a plastic. Um, and then the processes that you can go through to make these different composites, you can weave them. Uh, we know what weaving is from, from the textiles. You can mold them. So you saw that in that first video on, uh, in, on composites. Pultrusion here, it's interesting, you can click on this link if you want to see what, what, uh, what that is, but essentially it is a mixture of two words, pull and extrusion. And what you're doing with pultrusion is you're pulling several layers of, um, usually it's some sort of cloth, through some sort of resin. And then you're making sheets of uh, some sort of um, composite out of that. And then we've got lamination. And lamination, you know, mostly when we're talking about lamination, we're talking about wood. This is where you take, you know, thin sheets of wood and glue them together and squish them. And we made plywood using lamination. Okay, concrete. So concrete's our first one. And concrete is essentially made out of water, Portland cement, and aggregates. This is like gravel and stuff. So here's, you know, the gravel, sand, water, cement, and then air. And essentially when you are making concrete, what you're doing is you are, you take limestone, which is a rock, and you crush it up and you heat it to get rid of the water and the and CO2 in it. And then once you've done that, you get this something called lime or cement. And from that, what you do is you make, you can um, mix it with the aggregate and then you can add water and you basically get a pourable rock. That's what is interesting about this is that you can pour rock. And this is uh, really important. The Romans were the ones who first invented concrete. And what they could do with it is that they could pour things that, that you know, make things out of rock that they couldn't do before. So for instance, before the Romans, if you wanted to make an interesting shape out of rock, you would have to carve it, which was very difficult, time consuming, and therefore expensive. So after um, the Romans invented concrete, if you wanted to make an interesting form, like an arch or a dome or something like that out of, uh, out of rock, you could simply pour it into the form and that would allow you to build it that way. And Rome is filled with monuments that are made out of concrete and some that you may have not have thought of as concrete, but like for instance the Colosseum is made out of concrete. The Parthenon is made out of, sorry, the Pantheon, not the Parthenon. The Parthenon is made out of rock. Uh, the Pantheon is made out of concrete and it was for a long time the biggest dome in the world and uh, made out of just concrete that's 2,000 years old. So it's quite a durable um, material. So go ahead and watch this. This shows you how they make concrete, or sorry, cement, which is kind of an interesting process. Okay, plywood, we've talked about this and we've even made some. Remember you're taking thin sheets of wood and you are gluing them together to make uh, ply and you're, you're doing that cross grain. This is uh, just a quick video on that to remind you how plywood is made. Um, particle board, remember with particle board you're taking small bits of wood and you're gluing them together. 
Um, MDF is also a form of particle board, so that's uh, an engineered wood and a composite material. Laminated veneer lumber is going to have thin sheets, but not as thin as plywood, of, um, of wood that are glued together. So this is the binding agent or the glue or the matrix, and this would be the reinforcement right here, which is the actual wood itself. Okay, fiberglass. When you're making fiberglass, what you're doing is you're taking like the fiberglass that we looked at in the last um, lesson on textiles. You're taking, um, or sorry, in glass. You're taking glass that's in fibrous form. You're taking like a mat of it, and you usually build up several layers of that mat. And then what you're doing is you're painting resin on it. So you want to get this resin embedded into the actual fiberglass. And they usually do this in a, in a form or a mold so that the fiberglass will take that, that shape. So for instance, if you want to make a boat, you can make a fiberglass boat by having the mold of the boat and then um, putting the fiberglass and resin within that mold. And that'll allow you to make a fiberglass boat. And, and fiberglass boats are very strong. Kevlar. So Kevlar is a product. It's a registered trademark. You guys should know what that R stands for. And basically it's a synthetic fiber and you cover it with resin and it produces a very strong material. Very, very strong. Um, this stuff is so strong that it makes bulletproof vests out of it. Uh, it's also nice and light, which is great. So it's strong and light. This is a canoe that's made out of Kevlar. So this would be a very strong canoe and you could do, you know, be do a lot of damage to it before it's actually going to break. Um, carbon fiber is also a very strong uh, material. So what we're doing here is again you're taking resin so that it's flexible when it doesn't have the re resin in it and when you put the resin in it hardens and it becomes very very strong. And they make bike frames and things like that out of carbon fiber um, so it can be incredibly strong. I think they're also making airplane fuselages and wings and things like that out of carbon fiber. Okay, some advantages and disadvantages of composites. Well, as I've talked about, um, they have they can be incredibly strong. Like Kevlar and carbon fiber are very very strong, and they'll have a low mass. So if you were to compare the same strength in a non-composite material, it would have a much higher mass if uh, compared to the composite material. So uh, so it's got a high performance for low mass. Mass. Now the problem is, is that it, it, it's it's a little easier. It's not easier to break necessarily, but when it breaks, it breaks. So you know, I, I don't know if you've ever seen a carbon fiber bicycle frame break, but when they do, it's it's spectacular. They just they blow apart, and and there's no fixing it. So that's they're not easy to be repaired, right? So that's that's an important thing to understand about them is they're you know once they're broken, it does not repair easily, and and that's a, a disadvantage, definitely a disadvantage. Um, the laminate ply patterns can be tailored to omnidirectional. So this means multi-directional or any directional mechanical specifications that you have. So if you want them to be strong in all directions, that can happen with, uh, with something like this, with a, a composite material. If we compare that to something like wood, if you think of natural wood, natural wood is easier to split along the grain and therefore it's not omnidirectionally strong. It does, it's not strong in all directions. It's strong in some directions, like the, you know, against the grain is strong, but with the grain, it's not as strong. And if you think of, you know, like uh, Taekwondo when they're breaking boards, they're always breaking those boards along the grain, the way they hold them, so that you can uh, split them much easier. Okay, um, they, you can make some super complex parts. So you can make things that, um, we talked about this a bit with concrete, you can make, you can mold them into shapes that just aren't easy to make in any other way. So that, that's a, a definite advantage of them. You know, you can make a, a whole bicycle frame out of, um, you know, carbon fiber and it's, it's solid and it's just one whole piece um, rather than having multiple pieces. Uh, which is what you'd have to do in, you know, to make that same thing out of uh, non-composite material. Um, you may not get the aesthetics that you want. So, for instance, a solid wood piece looks nicer than a composite piece for a lot of people. A lot of people would say, oh, you know, like, IKEA definitely uses uh, 
composite materials and a lot of their furniture and people say you know they look cheap and I don't like the way they look etc cetera, etc cetera. so you don't get the aesthetic quality that you would out of a, a, compo a non-composite material um, however you can reduce the amount of parts that you might need so for instance uh, you can mold an entire car body out of um, out of composite materials and you know that makes it so you have one part rather than lots of different parts um, however if that part breaks then the whole thing might need to be thrown out because again it comes back to this it's not easy to repair them once they break they're yeah very difficult to repair so if one part breaks the whole thing may be need to get thrown out so this you know for instance if you had a car body that was uh, formed out of composite materials and you got into an accident, you would probably have to throw away the entire car body, not just replace, say, uh, a front panel, a front quarter panel, or a door, or something like that. Uh, you get lower costs, so it costs less to use composite materials, and this is why, for instance, IKEA uses them, because they want low-cost furniture. Um, they are resistant to corrosion, so because they're not usually a natural product, they can, it's harder for uh, corrosion to work on that. And, and also when I say corrosion, um, it also could mean, well, it doesn't mean, corrosion doesn't mean this, but it, it's, they're also resistant to um, things like bacteria and fungus and things like that. So uh, because they're not a natural product. So they're resistant to corrosion. They're also resistant, they're more resilient um, in that sense. All right, thanks for watching.